The following content is supported by Victorious.org. Okay, so in question 4, we're given two scenarios. One is where you connect the springs in series and one is when you connect them in parallel. So the question asks what happens when we release the mass M, whether it moves up or down. So the answer is it moves upwards. So in the first scenario, we know that there are two forces acting on the mass. One is the downward gravitational force, mg, and another one is the tension upwards. So that implies that this spring, spring 2, has tension of t equals to the weight of the mass. And because spring 2 is connected to spring 1 as well, spring 1 must also have a tension of t equals to mg. Now we know that when the spring is stretched to length l over 2, the tension in the spring is mass times g. In scenario 2, we see that the spring is also extended to the length of L over 2. However, instead of connecting the springs in series, now we have the strings effectively in parallel. The tension in the strings and the springs are all T equals to mg. And that means that there's actually 2 mg of tension pulling the mass up. This must mean that when the hand is released, the weight of mg is less than the tension of 2 mg and hence the mass goes up. Now in part 2, we are asked to find the length of the equilibrium position. And L1 is the final length that the system would go to after the hand releases the mass in figure 4.2. Now for this question, we need information from both scenarios. We need to find the equilibrium equation for both figure 4.1 and figure 4.2. So for figure 4.1, this is the equilibrium. Mg is the weight of the object and K times L over 2 minus L0 is the tension in the spring. Rearranging gives us big L in terms of L0 and K. Now in the final scenario, X1 is defined to be the extension that the spring has from the original position. That also means that X1 is equal to the final length minus the length of the string L over 2 minus L0, the equilibrium length of the spring. Putting it all together, we obtain the following expression for L1. Now in part B, we change the mass of the second scenario from M to 5 over 2M. We're given the new equilibrium position and we're asked to extract the spring constant from it. We repeat the same steps by balancing forces and that gives us the expression of L2 in terms of L0 and K. We're now bringing the additional information that we've been provided in order to find the expression for K. And lastly, substituting in the value of K that we've gotten into the original equation for L1, we can get L0 in terms of big L1. Substituting it back into the original equation we have would give us the following expression for L1. I would classify such a question as more of a simultaneous equations question where the physics of is rather simple, it's just balancing of forces, but one needs to do the simultaneous equations correctly without making any mistake. The best way to improve for such questions is to practice. <laughs>